This is a feature length video on how to make your watches more awesome by making the hands better. We are going to tape the hands of a certain watch so they're more legible and so they look cooler. Now I don't know about you, but I have a ton of watches at this point. I find myself not wearing some pieces and I figured out why. One of two reasons, or maybe both. I don't like the strap or I don't like the handset. And I like the watch overall, like when I handle it and look at it, I go, yeah, that's a cool watch. I like it, but I find myself not wearing it. And those two reasons are why. And so I, over the last couple of years, have attacked this, as I often do in TMP, to make my gear more awesome, whether it's a gun, a knife, outdoor gear, tactical gear. Uh, I modify stuff. I'm a modifier. And I'll figure out how to do something, and that's what I'm going to show you right now, how to make your watch look awesome like this. So this is a nut and fancy modified Casio G-Shock GA100. I love these watches. They are outstanding. This is in the very cool blue and orange coloration, soon to be gone. I'll put a link for it below. Use my Amazon link so I can get five cents and go buy a hamburger once in a while. I tape these hands fluorescent, actually luminescent, also orange. This is actually an easy watch to do because there's not a seconds hand to deal with. And that's what it looks like. You'll remember that a normal GA100 or GA110 has a ventilated handset, which is okay. But some of the versions they have, I detest. I just don't like them. I don't like the handset. And so now, uh, and the camera's not really capturing the color perfectly. It's a lot brighter than it's looking like in the viewfinder. I'll check my white balance here. But it, it really really pops it's awesome so you pick it out and as a quick reminder you have the functionality of a g8 uh, 100 110 with all the cool functions this is a negative lcd so it's a little bit harder to to see dual slewable world time it's just such a great watch only 60 bucks too anyway so that's one i modified here comes a casio primo i'm uh, not casio citizen Primo Chronograph. And so the handset on this was very slender. I'll roll in a photo if I can find it. I always say if I can find it because I take so many and maybe I don't have it with me when I'm editing. But I did take one. And it's okay, but this is a lot more awesome like this. You can see I, I taped it white. It's broad. It looks cooler to me, the wearer. And that's all that counts is if you like it. I don't care what anyone else thinks. If I like it, I'm happy. And now I, I'm like, looking for opportunities to wear this watch after my hands modification. This was a more difficult watch to do. It's a chronograph. It has a certain, I don't know, a certain way of being put together that you have to learn. And every watch is different. I'm going to show you probably a simple watch here uh, when we get going. Here's one more example of a hands taping job by myself. This is a Wegener Roadster. And I actually tweeted this out the other day, dudes. It, uh, it was like 49 bucks. And the cool thing about the process I'm going to show you is that you can buy and get watches that otherwise would not be attractive to you because of the hands. Maybe it's the hands. Uh, and you go, well, I have a hand taping skill set that I can modify it and look out. Once you have that, like I do at this point, I've been doing it for about three months, practicing, making mistakes, getting better. Then it opens up so many avenues for watches for you, inexpensive ones. You go, yeah, I, I love everything about the watch, but I hate the hands. Like this one, I hated the hands that came on the Roadster, at least the way they were. These are the original hands, but now, as you can see, uh, I taped them. Now, and this is, again, a feature-length video. If you're in a hurry, put it on 1.5 times speed and rip through it, click through it. Uh, you'll see the whole process. I'm not going to try to hurry this piece. I'm just not. There's too much to say, too much philosophy of why this is cool and all that other stuff. But the way I ended up doing the taping is I tried painting and I really had mixed results, usually poor results doing that. It sucked. And I, I went to several watch shops too and tried to find services that would change the color of your hands. And I couldn't find any. And everywhere, and I, everywhere I went, they had no clue what I was talking about. They were like, uh, never heard of that. You want to change the color of your watch hands? I'm like, absolutely. Had one in, in uh, a certain place that taped them. I'm sorry, painted them. And they did an okay job. I may show you that one later on. I just wasn't happy. Went to another one. 
they had no clue. And I just gave up pretty much. I was like, if I want to do this, I got to do it myself because I know I'll get done right once I'm practiced. So look at how cool that turned out. I mean, look at those broad, thick, awesome, high legibility hands on a $50 Swiss watch. It's sapphire coated crystal. It's a Ronda quartz movement. And then I filled this in with orange too. Again, the colors on this aren't really showing exactly um, accurately. It's really bright. And I decided to go with the orange instead of the red because that's what I had on hand. There you go. So the watch we're going to do right now and we're going to tape the hands is this very affordable, still pretty excellent Navaforce. Links below. So those inexpensive Chinese watches that I've been reviewing, showing you guys through the years are, are really awesome. Here's another one. This is an infantry watch. I may do a video later on how to replace the batteries on this one. It is doable. There are two batteries in this infantry watch. There's a 2025 that runs LCD screen and there's a 926 layered beneath the movement you have to kind of unscrew and get to. Doable. And I'm going to do a hands modification on this. I've already done one. It turned out awesome. A pure white, not the half, half white, half black Bell & Ross homage. I'm getting sick of that. It's like every watch has to follow the Bell & Ross, at least if it's a a pilot or a field watch. This one's doing it too. And that's the problem with this watch. Look at the tiny hands to begin with. And now the hands are also half colored. They're half black and half red. They're not legible at all. Uh, to be honest, I would never wear this watch because of that. It's my son's watch, Last Suspect, and he loves it. So I'm going to modify the hands for him. And it's a good uh, first watch to show you guys. Let's get going. So much to show you and do. This should be a relatively simple process on this one because it's a simple analog quartz. It's not a chronograph. It doesn't have a layered design like this one. This one is actually very complex to take apart, amazingly. Uh, it should be pretty simple. I might be surprised. Uh, it does have a crystal protector on it from myself. This is an armor suit shield or whatever they call it. And I cut these out and it's layered and it totally has protected that crystal. So it's a little bit marred up, but it underneath the crystal is virgin. It looks great. Okay, some tools you're gonna need for this process. There are some, and I'll probably introduce more as we go along. You're gonna need a case back removal tool. Uh, these are inexpensive. You can get, you need a large one for most watches. So this is an extra large one. The one that comes in the watch tool set is usually too small. It will be for this. So this is an XL one. You need a hand, watch hand removal tool. I'll put links below. So what this does is it'll grab the watch hand and there's that little brass plunger that will come up and it'll remove it. Really cool. Um, this, I don't know if it's professional quality, but it's worked for me. You'll need a series of tiny jeweler screwdrivers. And I have different ones for different watches. I usually have a precision oiler because I'll lubricate the stem before I put it back in and some other things occasionally. You need razor blades, and you'll probably go through one razor blade per watch. Keep them really, really sharp. I'll talk about that as we go. This is a watch hand pressure tool. You don't need this, I have found, but it is helpful. So it has a hollow little uh, portion in there in the tip. And then what it does is it presses the watch hands back down onto the axle after you're done. I use that sometimes. It comes with inserts for that. Holy cow, nothing fancy. How much crap is there? Well, there's some. I use precision screwdrivers for the, some uh, screwdrivers, scissors sometimes to cut the watch hands, but I do that less frequently now. And some other stuff that I'm not going to show you. And we might roll it in as we go. Now, before I crack this open and get to the, uh, the crux of it, I want to show you how you can do a mock-up to know if the hand color is right for you. Um, you can actually cut down, put your tape on your uh, like a cardstock and cut out little pseudo hands and I've done it with orange I don't have like red or white with me and this is just that fluorescent luminescent orange material and what I do is I'll lay it on the face like this and I just started doing this actually it's actually helpful to know what color will work with your watch before you go into the hassle of doing it Again, we're not using orange, but I'm just kind of showing you as an indicator of what you can do. Okay, so I think on this watch, I'm going to go with a white coloration. And the reason I'm doing that is I think it's going to be more legible. I was going to go with this red. 
And this is automotive tape that I found, and it is kind of hard to find. You want super thin, high quality tape of the color that you want. I found this one. It's called actually art tape. I haven't used this particular type before, but it looks good and it looks like it's thin enough. The thing you, you don't want and thing I hate about that orange material I showed you is it's really thick because it changes the, the dimensional thickness of the hands. And when you put them back on, you can get interferences where they're not rotating properly. So if I were to have you guys here in person, I bet you'd all go, go red, go red. So it's actually between these two colors that I'm going to do. And I'm not cutting little mini hands out. I'm just doing some thinking here. We're going to go with white. I, I want more legibility. This is a really high quality tape right here, dudes. And I've had it for probably 20 years. This is a 3M uh, tr automotive trim taping tape. And I can't find it anymore. At least not readily. Uh, and it actually is really thin, super high quality, and it comes with a layer of clear on it, which I'm going to take off right here. And I think you can see the details what I'm doing. Have these tweezers, by the way. These are awesome. They're like for eyebrows or something. So on, I wish I could get this for every color. So this is just a protective layer I'm pulling off of the white right here, and now it's ready to use. So we'll just keep that right there. And so we're going with white hands. And, and there's white in the back of the face there that'll tie into. Now, sorry if I'm rotating the watch uh, because the camera and lighting setup the way it is, is you're actually backwards to me. I think you can see that. So I may rotate around. I'll try to keep it oriented to you guys. Now I'm just adjusting my watch tool to fit this case back. I laugh because there was one time I, in my watch progression, I was so f afraid to crack into watches. I thought I'd screw them up uh, and as I did it more and more I got more confident in doing it and then I just realized it's not that big of a deal especially with a quartz watch because the quartz are so simple you'll see there's not much in here at all the automatic watches are a lot more difficult because uh, they're going to have like stainless steel retention clips that hold the movement in they have tiny tiny little screws I may do a video on that and show you how I've modded those I've done a couple and it's tough it's not easy uh, let me show you this. I set my watch hands. Uh, I'm going to at the six o'clock position, and I'm going to try to get the second hand at the twelve o'clock position as well. And the reason I do that is because when I put these hands back on, I don't want to have to go through a timing process. Another thing, you guys. Sorry, I'm not oriented to you. Another thing you guys will notice is that. Uh, sometimes you'll have watches, the hands aren't timed properly with a seconds hand, a chrono seconds hand. Uh, it just may be something that annoys you. This is a time that you can fix it. Another thing you'll need is a little glass dish to put your parts in. Okay, right there. And then in a quartz watch, what we're going to do is we're going to take that battery out because we want to freeze those hands. This is a plastic retention ring in your uh, watch. And there's a couple ways to take it out. Sometimes I'll, these will crack and break. Don't worry about it too much. They'll still be okay. But this one should be pretty easy. This is a watch case back pry tool. You don't need this. I'm just, just handy. And I'll just pop it out. It goes into the parts tray. Now we go and come to stem removal. So on this watch, you'll see it say... I've never done a watch or this type before. You'll see where it says push right here. Get my dental pick. That's good when they have that. Sometimes they don't, and you may have to experiment with how to remove the stem because obviously this has to come out so we can remove the movement to work on it, right? Before we do that, as promised, we are going to take the battery out so it freezes the hands. This has just a spring-loaded tool, it looks like, a retention clip, which is awesome. I love it when they have those. And this battery is a 371 in this particular Navaforce parts tray. And now we come with the fun part of what to push. And sometimes you just have to experiment on what gets pushed here. And you'll, this is where you're gonna need a variety of tools to access the, the release point for that stem. 
So it says push, and I find that they're, they're not very helpful of exactly what you're pushing. One thing you're not seeing is I have this actually magnifying glass set, has a light on it, and I use this all the time. So this is what I'm looking at the watch with. Uh, you will need that. Holy cow, nothing fancy. There's a lot of stuff I need for this. I think I'll leave my hands just the way they are. Roger that. Oh, this is that freaking S. Too close for missiles, switching to guns. Try this right here. Might be this portion right there. There it is. Okay, so I had to switch tools, techniques, like you'll often have to do. What I did is I got the very pointy end, as you can see, of a needle. And I'm going to show you right where it is. On an Epson quartz movement, doesn't matter the brand of the watch. So it is right here. So it is close to where the arrow is, but it's, it's nothing that is evident. You can't even see it. You just jam it in there. And I wouldn't worry too much about damaging anything. You don't want to like press super hard, but enough to release uh, the stem. The crown stem assembly. Now, I told you that I have that precision oiler, and this is when I'm going to oil this up. Not a lot, since we're doing it. And the reason is it'll go in easier. And it just will rust proof, proof it a little bit. There you go. So I just precision oiled it right there. And you can use anything. You use WD-40. I wouldn't worry about it at all. It does not matter. Especially on a $17 watch like this. Dudes, that's inexpensive. Okay, so now this is just a quartz movement. It's an Epson quartz movement, as you can see in these Naviforce. And I told you these are great watches for quartz watches. They are. They're very accurate. They're reliable. They're just really good watches. And this has got that cool three-dimensional face I talked about in the WRV years ago. And then, what do you know? I bumped my minutes hand. That often happens. So it's not exactly timed the way I want. Whatever. Now, what I'm going to do is, is remove this second hand with my tool here. Drop it right here on the mouse pad. And then what I find sometimes I like doing is, is protecting the watch face from the tool. Because if I come down here like this and take these hands off, you can mar your face up. And so you want to put a little bit of electrical tape on there. So I'm just going to put a couple strands of electrical tape. No big deal. Orient that to you. And then we'll pull them right off. And what it'll do is protect that face from the wash tool. You don't have to do this. And if you're trying on a, on a watch you don't care about, I don't even worry about it. On this, I'm just kind of showing the process. Those other watches I showed you, I totally do that with just lay it down. And it's easier without a chronograph with subdials with little hands on it. It's funny that I looked around online and I just don't see anything like this. I haven't seen this exact thing. I look for it of, of hands modifications. Maybe it's out there, but I don't know. So maybe this will be the first of its type. There comes the minutes hand. I'll show you the process of which I'm doing this. Oops, missed it. Hey, nothing fancy. Have you ever ruined a watch doing this? Yes, I have. Several, actually. I've lost hands. They've popped off and I couldn't find them. That's most unfortunate. Yeah, that sucked. And um, yeah, I've just screwed it up. I've made mistakes and you will too. But... I'm a lot better now at it than I was. Here's our white material. Again, the super high quality trim taping material is what it was designed for. So if you went had a, I don't know, I, I got it years ago when I taped uh, my wife's car, her stainless steel trim. And God, this stuff is, I don't know, it's probably like 25 years old, but it's still like new. It's super high quality. 3M, I believe, is a brand. So here it is, the adhesive side, the razor blade. Now, what you can do is uh, alcohol these so you get good adherence on the face. I don't 
usually do that because usually, usually the hands are pretty clean as they come out. Can't use that. I need a, another tool. Really precise pliers. I need to get me some non-magnetic ones. And then I'm just gonna lay these down. Doesn't matter the orientation you have. Now, one thing you may have noted, and maybe you did said in comment, you'll go, well, if you tape your hands, you're gonna lose the luminescence with that tape you're using, nothing fancy. Uh, you're right, you will, but it doesn't matter. If, if you think about it, I mean, how, how effective is the luminescence on your watch hands with most of the watches you're wearing? Yeah, if you charge them up like immediately, sure. But if, you know, eight hours into your day, evening, you look at your hands, they may be faintly glowing. I don't find it to be that big of a deal to get me the color and the legibility I'm after. Uh, you might find some material like that orange tape that I showed you. This stuff right here, it's in my bag of hands colors. And by the way, here's some of the other colors I have. There's orange, there's black, that's an automotive tape. There's the white, there's red, and I actually have fluorescent green, fluorescent yellow. Uh, I don't think those are luminescent. They're just really bright, really cool. Use them sparingly. I mean, you don't want it on every watch. But to answer your question, yeah, you'll lose luminescence on it. Now, on my razor blades, I'm doing a lot of watch hands. Uh, I'll actually date them usually because you want your, your razor blades to stay super sharp. Like I said earlier, probably one. You want to go through one per watch. Okay, so now we're just going to cut the hands. And the way I've, I'm doing it these days, subject to change, I showed you those precision scissors that you can use. I'm just going to use a razor blade. I'm going to go along straight lines, and I'm going to really press down, bear down, and get a really clean cut. These are sword hands, mini sword hands. And they're actually, I think, going to be relatively easy to do. There are some hands that are not easy to do, depending on the material you're using. Oh, flip. Hmm, maybe I do need to alcohol this one. That did slip off. Let me see if that one's on. Reuse this. Mm -hmm. I may mean, should I should have just pressed it down harder. And I'll have to put it right here. It's time to use a better razor blade. Speak of the devil. And I need to find some really sharp razor blades. I've used, by the way, in case you're wondering, scalpels and with mixed success. So if you're saying use a scalpel, use an X-Acto knife. Mm, I've used all of them and I've just kind of come with razor blades because they're inexpensive, they're easy to use and if you do it right, i.e. sharp, they should work fine. Let me press this down harder so it adheres. I don't know how I'll edit this, how much I'll show you. Probably a lot of it, again, feature length. No apologies. I don't like it when a guy's doing a how-to video and he cuts it down and his camera work is bad. He doesn't answer questions. I hate that. There are some good ones too, by the way. Don't worry if you over cut it. So like if there's some excess on the side of your hands, don't even worry about that. We'll, we'll take care of that here in a minute. Can you see what I'm doing here? So I'm just laying the razor blade to the side of the sword hand. If you have super skinny watch hands, uh, oh crap, I just cut the hand itself. Uh, I probably wouldn't do that because you need some spance so the tape can adhere on it. You might be able to paint those because I have good success painting seconds hand, seconds hands like I've shown you. Did I get that right? I did. You may screw up on your tape job. Don't worry about it. You know it. You know, just don't even worry about it. You can peel the tape up and try again. And another thing I've learned is you're looking at these hands as you're doing the process through magnified optics, like I am right now. You're gonna see every little flaw. 
when you put the hands back on the watch, you're not going to have that. And so if the hands aren't exactly perfect, don't worry about it. No one's going to notice. You're not going to notice. And you'll get to the point, more watch hands you tape, you'll go, is it really worth it for me to peel this up and spend another, I don't know, sometimes half hour cutting out the hands? It's, it's very highly detailed work. I mean, this is, it's something. And I, this one I'm doing is easy. Like some of those other watches I've shown you there, it's a process, man, to get it right and do it right. It's not easy, but the, the rewards are high for me. Okay. So there's the initial cut. Let me zoom in here a little bit right here. Oh, that's better. So we got that. Now, see how that's rounded? You're not going to exactly cut it round. Notice what I'm doing. I'm doing a series of straight cuts like this. So it's kind of octagonal. And then we'll trim it up as we go. And on this one, I'm just pressing down, trying to get a really clean cut. On this white tape material by 3M, it's it works great. On that orange, it's thicker. Oh, dude, it's hard to cut that stuff. And it's just really difficult to work with. What we need to do is have specific watch taping tape be produced and made readily available to the consumer. There is no such thing right now. And one of my purposes in this video is to make manufacturers do that all different colors super high quality luminescent all of it should be luminescent and now we take a first look at this and before we do that i need to see if we're going to paint this mm, yeah we're painting that i don't like that so do i have my putty here i do Okay, so I'm gonna paint, and I'm not gonna show you this because it's uh, I have to rearrange my camera, but this is a black seconds hand. So it totally blends in with the back, and notice right here, I hope you can, oh, sorry if I'm not doing a good job, right here. So there's a little tiny hole in most of these seconds hand, and this one, yeah, this one has the same thing. I had to learn that. so. You would think that's just like a little, you know, a little pin that would stick in. No, there's a hole in that seconds hand axle and you're going to put it in there. The reason I'm telling you this is you don't want paint to go in there. Otherwise, it will not go back on. So I get a little bit of, they call it earthquake putty or something like that. And I'll just put it right here, stab it. And now we figure out what color we want this. I'm going to go with kind of a fluorescent red. And I'm going to paint this right now. The reason I want to do it now is so it can start drying. And I am in the workshop. Oh, come on, dude. Come on now. Let me pause it. I'll be right back. This is the color I'm using right here. This one go wide here. I like matte paint, of course. It's uh, actually in a vice. Not the second hand, but a toothpick holding that putty and that gets it nice up in the air so I can spray it. Now it's drying. That's why you want to spray it now because I'm going to pretty much mount it right up after these hands are done. Get my cardboard back here. This is just an index card that I'm cutting on. One of the hardest hands that I taped were IWC style of hands where they come to a very sharp tip. It makes it difficult for that tape to look good. So there's our initial cut right here, dudes. And now we're going to trim it up. I usually just hold it by hand. And then here's a little trade secret. I'm going to put some of that, that oil lube on the cutting edge and it makes it just glide just a little bit better. Don't worry about it ruining your tape, it won't. Your cut job is where you're gonna make or break your handset. You're gonna get it wrong as you start practicing. Don't worry about it, you'll get better. And it's actually kind of fun. It's 
fun detail work. If you like model making, doing anything with your hands, uh, you know, that requires detail, attention to detail, I think you'll like this. It's fun. And again, it's really fun when you see the results and you, you rescue that watch that you weren't wearing anymore just because suddenly the hands work for you. Just put a good strap on it and you're good to go. I like holding it with my hands or my fingers uh, because it seems like it mars up the tape less if I hold it with pliers or something like that. It doesn't do quite as well. And notice I'm just kind of picking at it and that's kind of why I want you to think of it is you just, once you do your initial cut, you want to just very slowly cut your hands. Watch hands, not your real hands. This is cool. Yeah, it's not the best cut back there. I'm not happy with it because I kind of overcut it, so it's exposing the hand a little bit. But this is the hours hand, so that's going to be actually hidden, so I'm not super worried about it. That's actually a pretty good cut on the front. I don't even know if I'm going to mess with it. Sometimes you'll tape and you'll actually extend over the handset and you'll it'll actually look good and you'll go, holy cow, that's good. If it's symmetric, leave it. But if you want to have it, it follow the profile of the hand itself, then you know, just trim it up. This one is following the, the hand. Okay, and I'll show you how we're gonna cut that hole in there too. That's a little bit intricate to do. Okay, you see these little shards right here? Can you see that? So there's some shards uh, of tape around there. So there, we're just going to pick at that and then we're going to like pull at it to clean it up. Because we do want to make it as look as factory and as precise as possible. I did say earlier, you know, if it's not exactly perfect, don't worry about it. That's true, but what you're going to do and what I try to do is I make it as good as I can with the time I'm willing to put into it. That's a that's a big thing too. It's like, I mean, do I want to spend all day on this watch? I got a ton of other things to do. I had to go into post-production today for four hours, so that's on my list. Got to get ready for a backpack trip. That's on my list. I got to test like 15 guns. That's on my list. That's good right there, dudes. Look at that. I'm leaving it just like that. That looks great. Okay, now see the hole? Here's how we're going to cut that hole. And I've tried different techniques. This is where I'm at now. Subject change. Get those needles I showed you. And then you're going to come in and you're going to just poke it in the center. If you have good adherence, you should. See how it's adhering to that hand? We're going to push it through like this. See that? And then... We're gonna cut it. And I'm gonna use kind of a duller razor blade here because I'm going against metal now against the needle. And we're gonna push it so we kind of flare out that tape. So what we're doing is exposing it so we can cut it. This is a very important part that you're doing right here. And the reason is, is if you don't get this right, the hands won't rotate. Put that down a little bit further. See how that flared up right here? You see the tape? That's what I'm cutting. I have tried melting it, heating up the needle and just burning it through. Mm, mixed results on that too. Just it didn't really work the way I wanted it to because it create what it does is it melts the material, then it goes back into the hole. Now you got to scrape it out. So I'm back to doing it this way. What you can do, depending on your watch and the effect you want, is you can just cut the tape out. Like from this portion back, you could just not even have it taped. Just do a straight cut. I do that sometimes too. If the back of the hours hand is not exposed, I'd probably recommend it because you do not want to dimensionally change. If you can get away with it, the width or I should say the thickness of these watch hands. You don't want to do that. 
Now, as I've handled it, you can see that this tape kind of sunk in where the loom is on the regular hand. Nothing you can do about that and just deal with it. It is not going to be like totally perfect because you'd have to like fill it and go through this long process of making it all the same thickness. It's not worth it. You can do it. I ain't doing it. It's too much time. And again, you're looking with your naked eye on these hands. They're going to look awesome. You won't notice anything wrong with them at all at a distance. Sometimes if you put your hands back together and they're not rotating right and they can't go on right, it's because you still have some issues with this portion over here. Let me see if that is covered up. Yeah, I think it is covered up. Here, I'm going to do exactly what I was just telling you, how I'm going to cut it, because that minute's hand... Where did it go? That minute's hand... There it is. That minute's hand will cover it. So I'm just going to cut it. Now, uh, like I said, I have ruined watches learning this process for sure. And you can lose small parts. I was taking off a, a watch hand. is actually today. And that freaking watch hand tool, which works great. I love it. It popped the hand off and it went flying. And I can't find it. It's gone. I mean, I looked everywhere. I was in my office for that one. There's the cut I'm telling you about. So I just straight cut it. Now we don't have to worry about it. I probably should have done that right off the bat. Yep. Whatever, that'll work. That hand is done, dudes. Yes, I'm bummed. That watch is completely ruined. It's a $150 watch now that's uh, not usable because I don't have a replacement hand for it and you can't order them. Uh, maybe down the road I'll have some parts that I can add to it. That's my dull one. I need my sharp one now. Do the minutes hand. Again, we're just doing straight cuts initially. Picking at it. We're just picking at it. So your wife is going to come in. She's going to see you leaned over at your desk and you're going to be dinking around with a watch. Go, what are you doing? I am modifying my watch hands, honey, for more awesomeness. And here's what you tell her. Because you know how she listens to my voice all the time. And you guys are always ordering all the stuff I review. Say, hey, this doesn't cost me hardly anything. It's free. So you should be happy that I'm not spending stuff off nothing fancy's reviews. <laughs> She'll like that. She'll go, ooh, good point. Keep taping those hands. Uh, you're going to find, if you're like me, this is going to become addicting for you. Maybe for the work, but I think definitely for the results you're going to get. You're, it's really going to transform your watch to different levels. I don't know, I don't know how this Navaforce will look with this. I suspect it's going to look a lot better. But it's just going to make you happy. And that's what I say in my watch reviews. And actually all reviews. Guns, knives. It just makes you happy. It's just just kind of fun. You know, it's just more than anything. It's a second cool project. And uh, I like gear being the way I like it, you know. Oh, my gosh, that turned out good. That's like a really good initial cut. Look at this cut I did. And I just got it right on this one. I got lucky. And look at how much better... That hand looks over that half red, half black. It was awful. It was really bad. I mean, I wore that watch after I reviewed it a couple times, and I guess we all take journeys in our gear progression, and I just got to where I hated it. I was like, God, these hands are so hard to read. And I, this is a Navaforce. I showed you that infantry. I'm really not a watch snob. I mean, I'm not an neurologist. I never will be. I think those guys are really kind of snobby about their watches and what they'll wear. And does my form approve of my watch selection? And, ooh, I got a, I got this on sale for $7,000. I, I, that's not me. I'm a high-value watch guy. You know, I have I have $1,000 watch. I do. And I'm going to review it later. But I don't like go, oh, I got to wear that $1,000 watch. That make Because then everybody will think I'm cool if I'm running around with that expensive piece. Uh, here's a clue bird for the world. No one really cares about what watch you wear, generally. It's, it's for you. And so 
that's what you need to go for. If it makes you happy, you're good. Unless you have watch buddies, and I don't, most of the people I know, sorry if I'm not showing you this too well, uh, <laughs> they don't, they're not into watches. And so I am. I like it. It's a fun diversion. Changing your watch out every day is so fun. So what I'm doing here is making a hole for the axle or whatever you want to call it for the second hand. This is also a very important cut. And this is where the thickness of the tape you've selected is really important because if you have really thick tape, you're going to find that second hand will not want to seat in that hole. That looks pretty good. So there's our minutes hand. See how the tip looks. <laughs> I, I just honestly, I just totally got lucky on this guys. I did. And this shadows here from the camera. Sorry. So that's why I have to come over here. It's just the way my lighting setup is right now. And I think that second hand thing will be acceptable. Let's see how the drying process is going on over here. Let me show you what I got. So this is on a, like on the stick. So I painted this. What do you guys think? Should I hit it again? I think I'm just going to go with the way it is right there. Seeing if it's consistent. Dry to the touch. Yeah, I'm going with it like that. Otherwise, I have to wait another half hour for it to... Well, not a half hour, but some time before it's ready to put on. So you can see the putty protected, that underside of the second hand. This is what you want. See that? If you get that gunked up right there, dudes, uh, you're going to have a little process trying to get out because that is tiny. Trying to get in there and clean it. Oh, good luck, dude. A little bit of paint on the other side. Take a look at it. Now, we're going to start reassembling already. Then fancy, this is the most boring video you've ever done. Somebody's going to like it. You watch. It's going to help somebody. I wish I'd had a video like this when I started the process out because I didn't know crap. I really wanted it. Couldn't find it. Here comes hours hand in our time position. When you do this, by the way, make sure your orientation's right. Sometimes I've done it upside down, like I thought it was six o'clock and it was twelve o'clock, vice versa. Here comes my tips that put the hand back on. So these are from that watch pu pusher tool. They have a hole in it, and I just use them by hand. So I told you I don't use that watch pusher too much. I do a little bit, but usually I find the hands will go on just with light pressure. Cool. One thing I forgot to tell you dudes is uh, look at the, your hands before you take them off and see how they're oriented, see the space between the hands and just take a mental note, maybe even take a macro picture of them. And the reason that's important is uh, when you put it back together, if you have a question, if you got it right, you can reference that. Making sure that second hand hole is big enough. One more trim with my razor sharp razor. This will go on the B channel. I'm pretty much putting my watch content on the B channel. Oh yeah, oh yeah, cut, 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 cut. This is an important cut right there. There we go, good. So I got that, kind of that little piece out there. I mentioned that if you have shards on your hand, you can trim it. This one's pretty clean, but if you don't, just rub it. And you might even put a little bit of oil on your hands like WD-40 or something and rub it and you'll get some of that stuff off and uh, make it look cleaner. Yes, yeah, sometimes I just put it on by hand. I'll do a tweezer application on this one. One thing you might can do to prevent losing small parts, I started to do this. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. 
Oh my gosh, that transforms this watch. Wow. That is awesome, dudes. God, this watch I would wear now. Tell me I didn't lose my seconds hand. There it is. Speaking of which, what I was saying is that to prevent losing small parts. Oh yeah, it was timed over here, wasn't it? Actually, I'll just put it in 12 o'clock position. Put it in a box. So like a model box that's white or something. Like, ta uh, not Tactical Doodle, but Last Suspect. He does Gundam models. And I'll use one of his his uh, parts boxes to hold the watch. I'm not doing it now because it's uh, it gets in the way. Notice what I just did, how it pushed the whole mechanism down. That's because I wasn't supporting it. So i got to come back up, hold the back up. I was trying to show you... the what I was pressing. Oh my gosh, that looks freaking awesome. Now, this is going to be hard to see. In the middle of that watch axle is that little tiny pin for the second's hand. It's almost, even with magnified optics, it's uh, hard to see. But it is there. And that's why we cut the hole out. So we're going to attempt to put our second's hand on. I'm going to show you a, pro a trick that I came up with to do it. Because that second's hand is so tiny. Cut a little piece of electrical tape like this. And then you're just going to grab your second's hand by the end like that. See this? And then you can like manipulate it and carry it all around. And then good luck getting it back on there. I hate how short the second's hand is though. It's on this particular nav force, it's way too small. Cut some of this off. I like the layered design of this dial, though. It's really cool. It's got the three-dimensional effect on it. Mm. Probably should have painted it some more. I'm looking at it now. It's not, like, totally perfect. Whatever. Suspect won't care. This is his watch. He'll love it. Oh, dang it. Toothpick, this helps too. Non-magnetic, doesn't have any finger grease on it. Just be really gentle getting it back on there. You'll kind of know when it's on because it'll... I'm pulling the tape off now. See that? Because it'll look centered. And be patient with putting your second hand back on, your chrono hand. It's just... It's fiddly. It's just a fiddly process that sometimes you'll get right and sometimes you won't. Oh, dude, that's on. Okay, now to time these perfectly, I'll just push them a little bit. I shouldn't say perfect. Nothing's going to be perfect on this process, just as, to an acceptable level, let's say that. Take off our tape slowly. Now... One thing I've also been doing, and Suspect and I, he's a watch guy, my son, Last Suspect, that's his YouTube name. One thing we've been doing is putting decals on the watch faces for more detail, which is really cool. And we use Gundam decals to do it. It's pretty radical. Let's see if I have a sheet right here. I'm not doing that here because there's, there's enough going on. Oh, hold on. Wait, I do have a space for one there. That could be cool. I think I am going to put one on here. He's got more. Look at this one right here. So these are from like 100 scale Gundams. That would be kind of cool right there, don't you think, dudes? Oh, yeah, buddy. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Holy cow. Last minute change, dudes. Oh, that's going to be awesome. He's going to love this. Uh, if you don't know, Last Suspect is in consummate artist he's really good oh my gosh my son can do fantasy sci-fi art just to like hand-drawn like gundams and halo type stuff it's amazing uh we're gonna put this on though what that's crazy you're putting a decal on a watch face absolutely actually we're gonna go with two of them i'm gonna go with this daint the one says danger on it so we're going to float these in water, use uh, 
tweezers to put them on. I'm going to put it right over here. I don't even know what this says. It, it just looks cool. It's like a coat of armor or something from a Gundam. And if you don't know, Gundams are like these manned robots in um, Japanimation, I think they call it. I show them in the bunker all the time, dudes. Make sure that's oriented correctly. I think it's like that. Oh, that's going to be rad. Let me get some water real quick. The other day I was talking to Suspect and I saw him using these decals. I go, oh, those are cool. He's like, and he was like trying to explain how they work. It's like, yeah, you got to soak them in water and you got to do I was like, dude, I was putting decals on when I was seven on my model builds. Like I was doing like monogram B25s, 172nd scale. I used to uh, do, what was that other one? Uh, another scale. I did a 135 Hellcat and I used to use decals all the time. Like, yeah, man, I've been using decals forever. He's like, what? I didn't know you you had those back then. <laughs> I was like, come on, man. Decals, water decals like these have been around forever. Yeah. So let that soak a little bit. And then we're going to apply it right there. But look at that wash face, dudes. Oh, that looks so awesome. Yeah, holy freak. I can't, it's so much better than I thought. And that's the, the, the trick that the coloration of the hands will play on you. It, the hands look like they're super tiny, right? Oh, those hands are so small. Well, when you tape them like this and you make them pop like that, you can see they're actually appropriately sized. A lot of watches are like that. Getting there. I like to. I don't like to over soak my decals because it, it seems like the adhesive weakens a little bit from it. I can't believe this turned out like this. It's really cool. It happened for the video. Compensates for the many disasters I've had. Let's see. Lift this with. Razor blade. Now I gotta clean that oil off because I definitely don't want oil on the blade. Clean, clean, clean. Oh, toothpick, get out of the way. Oh, dude. This is gonna be awesome. Okay, toothpick, I take it back. I need your help. Oh. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. That is rad. And how much is this costing me? Like nothing. Nothing. And you know what I love most about this is, yeah, I think it's cool and it, it is. It's a huge improvement, but it's going to make my son happy. He's just going to love this. When he sees this watch modified, it's just going to make his day because he, he loves this watch. He's always loved this watch. And so it's a cool way to, you know, help someone out that it's a watch person. It's just a cool thing. Once you get your skills down. Oh, dude, that looks cool. I like it best if that was like totally white. To tie in thematically, a really bright red would look good too. This danger once is red, so it'll help compensate i find that when you decal a watch too um little tiny details like this i don't know they just really help and like this color doesn't seem like it'd be that much but it, it it's a lot this little tiny red sticker you'll be amazed at how much it just adds detail to the face of the watch see what i mean look at that hopefully i have enough water on that oh come on baby Now, if memory serves, if a decal is dry, which this one is, you can just drop some water on it. Like that. There you go. Hmm. Just like in the 70s, works the same way. Locate it. 
Now, I haven't mentioned this yet. You, when you crack these watches open, you might be really freaking out. Going, oh, man, I'm going to get dust in them. And it's like a scope, you know. I don't want to like a, show it to the atmosphere. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal. It won't matter. I just... I'll blow it out with compressed air if I've gotten stuff in it, but you really won't notice it. Huh. We're good. Toothpick. Suction. Oh, come on, baby. I don't want to ruin this one. This is a more difficult one to work with. How about... I need a needle. This one right here. Crap, I ground that one down. I did it to remove stems, uh, crown stem assemblies. There we go. Oh my gosh, that's gonna look good. Got a bonus decal application. Totally wasn't even planning on it. I think that's good right there, dudes. Let's take a look. That one edge is raised a little bit. I don't like that. Need some more water. God, this little decal on here is really tough to work with. God, look at how that just soaked that water up, that napkin, so quickly. Oh, that's perfect right there if it'll work. Now, on the decals, if and when you do this, you could use any decal. So, like, you go to a hobby shop. If I find some Amazon links, I'm going to put them below. And just buy decal sets that attract you. And it doesn't have to be anything thematically. It's just something you would find interesting on your watch face. That's all you're doing. Of course you could give it a theme. You could have like, you know, a World War II theme, uh, maybe some nose art from a B-17 from a 172nd scale model kit. That would be really cool. <sighs> There's a little bit of gunk right here. And I'll probably work towards that, you know, maybe some watch theme or, you know, themes of some sort. Uh, the thing you need, though, of course, is you need some room on your face. And this one has it, although I did it somewhat asymmetrically to compensate for the date. Um, but sure, every watch is different. Some will work and maybe some won't work so great. It's marred up a little bit there. Hmm. See, I bet you that's permanent. See how that, I just wiped it with water and now it has just a different finish in it. It's because of the finish they put on the watch. Uh, that's unfortunate, but I think we're going to have to live with it. Nothing fancy. It's a $17 watch. I hear you, but it's a lot cooler now. And now it has TMP value to it, being a modded watch. Here we go. Now, I could check the timing of my hands, make sure everything rotates. I actually recommend you do do that. But removing that crown stem assembly is such a pain in the butt. I don't want to go through it. I'm just going to chance it that I got it right. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Where's my compressed air, y'all? Here it is. Hmm, another thing you might need. Compressed air. Clean compressed air for light computers. Nice. Uh, I don't worry too much about letting those decals dry. I just go for it. They'll dry in the case. And there's not much water in there, so I'm not too worried about it. Your mileage may vary. Here comes the stem. Lubricated up. Some will go in differently. Some you have to depress the plunger. This one I assume you're just going to pop in, and I was correct. The plastic shroud coming in. These will just snap into place. Oh, i got to put my battery in first. Every watch you do will be different. Every crown stem removal is different. Some will be a lot more complex than this one. 
you'll get it. Have faith. Believe in yourself. Practice on the inexpensive ones, and it'll work out. Oh, seconds hand sweeping. Sick. Hand looks awesome. Cool. And I want to make sure the stem is all the way in. Because it was pulling out on me. It's in. Awesome. Okay. Sometimes with these plastic shroud inserts, I'll do a magic marker, like a Sharpie mark to show the orientation on the case because sometimes they're confusing. This one's pretty simple. I'm not too worried about it. And then I need to engrave this. I do this with every one I'm doing now. Now I'm starting to grave, so modded by nothing fancy gives a date. Sometimes you put a little bit of lubrication on your on your case back. I'm not going to do it on this one. And the O-ring is in good condition. It's still there. Sometimes they'll be in here. Just make sure your O-ring is seated properly. Don't pinch it, pinch it or cut it when you screw the case back in. Otherwise, you got to go out and find some O-rings that fit it and buy it. More time, more hassle. Hey, you haven't checked the timing of your hands yet. Are you pretty confident it's right? Yeah, I am. Plus, getting a case back off is easy. Dude, that looks freaking awesome. Look at that. That is awesome. And to check the timing, I'll just ro rotate it around. See, the hour index is perfect. Minute is perfect. The seconds hand doesn't want to stop very well. Whatever. Oh, man, that looks rad, dudes. <laughs> Look at that. All right, so watch hand modification complete feature length video. That was fun, actually. I had a good time. Hope you did, too. Uh, you can see that this watch is now transformed. I still think the, the watch hands on this particular watch are a little bit too small. Um, but they're so much better now taped in white. And I think that was the, the right color to go with. I was thinking about the red, but we would have lacked contrast there. And we do have a white theme running through the face. Awesome. Then we put the Gundam decals there for some more watch face complications. Very happy with how this turned out. And it's going to be fun. Uh, for my son, he's going to love it. And this strap, by the way, did not come with a watch. It's just a replacement strap. I think it came off an Invicta. But look, it has a, a red stitching pattern going up, tying into the watch. It just looks fantastic. All right, so launch away, team peers and visitors to the Nut and Fancy Project and modify your watch hands. I showed you the tools. I showed you the process, a lot of the thinking and planning that goes into it. Yes, it's tedious work. Yes, you could potentially ruin your watch forever, but, but the payout is huge. Good luck in your watch progress. Uh, I will do a lot more watch reviews so far. That's the way I'm thinking. They'll be posting here, at least for now on the B channel, subject to change. And uh, I appreciate the guys that support me in it. Join TMP Patreon. Appreciate it. That gives me uh, money to go out and buy these watches and not be beholden to anybody. Nothing fancy. Thanks. Good luck and be happy in your watch modifications. We'll see you.